all financial institutions that we're talking to have been investing in and looking at cloud technology for its inherent benefits of scale, flexibility, and adaptability. From a fraud perspective, this becomes even more important. Hello, this is Jazz Anand, and welcome to the Pete's Eye Fraud and Financial Crime Update. There is way more data available today than fraud departments are even taking advantage of or using. The good news is cloud-based modern architecture has that ability to scale and interrogate that data in real time to make decisions on customer interactions as they occur. But it also moves the onus of protecting that data and maintaining those applications on the service provider, freeing up time and resources for the fraud department to focus on strategy and innovation and keeping up with the latest threats and trends. One of the biggest mistakes science institutions make is they take legacy approaches to deploying new technology. By that, what I mean is they'll take their legacy APIs, their old data infrastructure, Structure that was connected to their old technology and try and point that to a modern cloud-based stack. Unfortunately, this just replicates the data inconsistencies and challenges that they had to overcome to deploy the legacy technology, and it can lead to lower detection and less optimized capabilities. So the first lesson is don't replicate your legacy issues on modern technology. Another common mistake financial institutions make is selecting the wrong technology partner. Having the wrong technology partner that either isn't skilled in managing cloud environments or is investing in moving previously on-prem deployments into the cloud, a lot of their investments may be spent on, unfortunately, just moving their applications into cloud-based environments. So picking the right technology vendor, not only from a platform perspective, but an implementation partner is very important. And then lastly, some institutions try and do too much. They try and do every channel across every business line in a very abrupt fashion. This is sometimes driven by contracts ending with legacy vendors and financial institutions being forced to make decisions with short timelines. So try not to do too much and make sure you have enough runway to plan the changes that are required for a large-scale digital transformation. But what is the right balance between my specific channel solutions that are working okay, my check fraud solution that works only for checks, or my credit card solution that works only for credit card, versus transforming and moving to a modern stack? And which channels do I move first? Which products do I move first? And how do I eventually get to a place where I modernized all of the technology stacks? And really that is a complex question. And what I've seen financial institutions do is really focus on the MVP and the business case to achieve that MVP. And what we've seen is the area of greatest need and improvement is on digital channels. That's the area where there's the most investment, the greatest sophistication of fraud losses. And so one of the no regrets areas to start to shore up is digital. We believe that it's going to be the channel of the future and majority of the volume will be digitally based. But you still have to wrestle with how much of my investment do I make to ensure that the current capabilities for check and or credit card also continue to evolve. I think the middle ground where you look to take advantage of the digital technologies you're investing to improve check and card fraud detection helps bridge the gap between sophisticated capabilities for specific channels and then slowly migrating the remaining channels. If you're enjoying our content, please subscribe and share. Stay tuned and watch for more information on customer-focused strategy. Thanks for watching. This has been Jazz Anand with Feedside.